Obliviate. Hi guys, how's it going? Damien O'Sullivan here giving you my review of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. The Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is the first in a new spin-off franchise from the much-loved Harry Potter series. Starring Eddie Redmayne, the film tells the story of Newt Scamander, a magic zoologist played by Redmayne, who after traveling the world, finding and rescuing these various magical creatures and keeping them in his case, ends up in New York. And the story basically follows him and a group of friends who he meets along the way. And after a few magical creatures break loose from the case, it's basically about them trying to find these magical creatures and put them back into the case. Now I'm gonna put this away, but uh, <laughs> first off, going into this film, I wasn't overly excited. I wasn't crazily uh, hyped out my mind. I'm a big Harry Potter fan. I like to love pretty much all of the Harry Potter movies, but I'm not one of these obsessive, crazy, hardcore Harry Potter fans. From the beginning of the marketing campaign, I wasn't really that interested, but over time, I actually got really excited to check this film out because the trailers really won me over. I really like the look of this film from the trailers. And overall, I have to be honest, I was a little kind of slightly underwhelmed with this film. It wasn't bad. It was by no means a bad film. It was a good film, but it wasn't as great as I think it could have been. Like I think it could have been really great, but for me, it kind of fell short a bit. But that being said, I did enjoy this film. I did think it was a good film. It just, it was good, but not great. First off, starting off with positives, one of the things I like most about this film is that although it is quite similar to Harry Potter in terms of it's the same kind of terminology with the magic, we've got the wizards, the witches, there's a lot of it that feels very familiar. At the same time, it does feel fresh and different in terms of it's a different setting, different characters, different world, because yes, it is still set in that same larger Harry Potter universe, but it's a very different setting, very different world, because we're back in 1920s New York, so we're in a different time period now, we're in a different setting, in America now, in the 1920s, and I really like that. It wasn't overly different in terms of how the story was concerned, it was pretty simple and basic and straightforward as far as the story was concerned, but I did like that it felt different and kind of fresh in terms of the scenery, different setting, different characters, a different world, so that I liked about this film. I especially like the setting of 1920s New York, because it's very different from anything we've ever seen in any Harry Potter film before, because in pretty much all the other Harry Potter films, it's just in modern day you know, England, and then obviously we're in Hogwarts as well. Whereas this, it's back in the 1920s in America, so it's cool to see the Wizarding World, but from the American's point of view, and um, we had the English wizard there, played by Eddie Redmayne, in New York, him experiencing this new culture, this new lifestyle, and how it's slightly different in America than it is in England. I also really like the characters in this film, and that was another thing that kind of differentiated it a bit from Harry Potter, because in Harry Potter, at least at the beginning of the series, it's just these young kids, essentially, where it's in this film, they're all grown-ups, and they still got that fun, family-friendly, fantastical feel to it that Harry Potter has. This isn't really dark or edgy or anything. It's still very fun and light-hearted and family-friendly, like the early Potter films, who knows, they might get darker as they go on, similar to Potter, I don't know, but this is much more of a family-friendly film, and I really like the characters, the characters were likeable, they were funny, they were engaging. I really liked Eddie Redmayne as Newt Scamander, I didn't know whether I would be that big of a fan of his character or not, if he would have that much to his character, but I really liked him because he was one of those characters that there's not a lot going on on the exterior he's not this big overly confident you know guy but he's got this kind of stuff going on inside of him he's got the kind of inner turmoil and conflict that he's kind of hiding and he's got this very kind of smiley kind of extravagant facade but yet he's kind of broken a little kind of hurt underneath and i like that i like how uh, Redmayne expressed that in his performance you know he wasn't this big overly confident wizard he was more of an introverted kind of guy who had problems and things going on in his life, but he kind of kept them close to his chest. And I actually like that. And one of the things I like most about his character that he was very different from any other kind of wizard character we've ever had in a Harry Potter film, because he's still a wizard. He's got a wand, you know, he's still a wizard, but he was almost like the David Attenborough of wizards. And I loved that about his character, because I didn't know at first that his character was a magic zoologist. It kind of makes sense because he's got this case full of uh, magical creatures, but I love the fact that he's this guy who's just been traveling the world, finding and rescuing these endangered magical creatures and is keeping them safe in this Narnia-like case. It was really cool because, like I said, he was kind of like the David Attenborough, but of wizards. He was almost a bit like kind of Matt Smith's Doctor crossed with 
Doctor Doolittle in a way. <laughs> it, was, it was really cool because it made him quite different and set him apart from all the other kind of wizard characters and that, yes, he's still a wizard, but he's more of an animal lover. He's more about caring and preserving these endangered animal species. And I really loved that. I really liked how that was implemented in this film with his character and that was really cool to see. Also, Catherine Waterson was really good in her role. Again, not a big, over-the-top kind of extravagant performance, but I think she's a really good actress and she did a really good job here. I think she did a great job in in Inherent Vice and I also really liked her in Steve Jobs as well and again she's great here and also Colin Farrell I thought was great in this I remember when I saw snippets of him in the trailers I was like oh he looks really cool as a wizard and I really liked him in this film I think he worked really well in this kind of Harry Potter universe as this wizard character it was really cool seeing him as that character seeing him in action I really hope we get to see more from his character in future films because I think he did a great job and he was really cool whenever he was on screen and also I've got to mention Dan Fogler's character of Kowalski. He's the nomad or muggle in this film. It was great because he was our kind of tie and tether to the real world so to speak because he's a human character and so we can relate to him and we can see the events of the film through him. He's like us as the audience really. He's experiencing all these new crazy magical fantastical things for the first time and it was great because having this nomad, this muggle, this human character there in the kind of main cast, it made the film more relatable in the way because we could relate to the events through him as he was experiencing these new things for the first time and we could see everything through his eyes and also there was a lot of great humour through his character as well in terms of how he reacted to different situations and yeah it, it made the film more engaging more funny and more entertaining because whenever he was kind of like reacting to these crazy situations we could relate to his character and how he was reacting to it however as far as negatives go there was a lot of things about this film that I wasn't really keen on that I think wasn't done that well first off the story I didn't dislike the story in this film, it's just that there wasn't really a whole lot to it and it kind of showed in the fact that this wasn't based off a book because all the other Harry Potter films were all adapted from novels by J.K. Rowling. But with this one, J.K. Rowling wrote the film, she wrote the screenplay, but this wasn't adapted from any book. It's based on a textbook from a Harry Potter film, so it's like... Uh, there wasn't really a lot to the story. It was basically some magical creatures go loose from the case. They've got to find the creatures and put them back in the case. That was really it. That was the story. I mean, there's some other things that happen with other characters along the way, but for the most part, the main storyline is magical creatures go loose. They've got to find them and put them back in the case. And I just don't know if that was really enough to make up a whole kind of main storyline for a feature length film. I, I like the story. I think it was good. I think it was done well, but I just don't know if there was really enough going on that really enough happened it was kind of good in a way i like the fact that it didn't overload this and overstuff it with so many things there's a lot they can do now going forward there's a lot of potential a lot of things they can explore in sequels and other films now going forward but at the same time i think the story was probably a little bit too basic a little bit too simplistic like not enough really happened i don't think i like the fact that it wasn't overloaded it wasn't overstuffed and crammed with so many different things all going on but for me a lot of the time it was a little slow there were pacing issues especially the first half of the film i think when they started to go out and try and find these magical creatures it picked up a bit and it became a little bit more fun but for the most part that first half anyway it was a very kind of slow i thought and it kind of dragged a bit in places and i think that also feeds into one of my other negative points and that was the actual script itself jk rowling actually wrote the screenplay for this film and this is the first time she's ever not only written a harry potter film but ever written a screenplay for a film and i think that showed this was by no means a badly written film it's just i think it showed a little bit in terms of the script and the story that this was an unexperienced writer as far as screenplays go like jk ron is a great writer no doubt she's no one knows harry potter better than her but as far as writing scripts for films you could tell she was a little bit out of her league like i said it wasn't badly written it, you know it was it was perfectly fine but i think it could have been a lot better with a more talented more experienced screenwriter i think david yates did a really good job as far as the direction was concerned and he could tell it was in very safe hands in terms of the direction but as far as the writing was concerned and the story it left a lot to be desired in terms of not a lot really happened and i think it could have been a lot better if it was written by someone else i think jk rowling should stick at this because obviously no one knows Harry Potter the better than her and it wasn't badly written. I think she will get better. It's obviously, I think it's just because this is her first film she's ever written a screenplay for. 
but like I said, these aren't adapted from books. J.K. Rowling is actually going straight into the films and actually writing the films, and I think with practice and more experience over time, she will get better. I would like to see her write more Harry Potter films, maybe write the sequels. I think she will get better at it, because as I said, this wasn't badly written. It wasn't a bad film. It just you could tell that the writer who came up with this story and actually wrote the screenplay was a little bit out of their depth, I felt. And finally, one of my biggest criticisms with this film, it's not a major thing really, but it was the CGI. Not the, all the CGI all the time, but as far as the magical creatures were concerned, I don't think the CGI of the creatures was that great. I felt this watching the trailers, but I thought it'd be one of those cases where it looks a little dodgy in the trailers, but as soon as you come to the film, it looks great. But not all the CGI, some CGI looked good, but for the most part, as far as the magical creatures were concerned, the actual animals didn't look that real. And I get the fact they're not gonna look real because they're not real animals, but if the CGI was really done well and was really convincing and believable, the animals would look real. But I felt like the magical creatures, the CGI of the creatures wasn't that great. And it kind of set me out the film a little bit because whenever they came on screen, I'm like, oh, it doesn't look real, that's CGI, this is a film. The actors are just pretending there's something there. It's not really there. I, I get the fact that it's the case with every film like this, but I think if the CGI was better and they did look more real, it would be more convincing, it would be more believable, and I wouldn't have got sucked out of the film as much as I did. I mean, I wasn't completely sucked out of the film. I just felt like the CGI could have been better. Overall, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was by no means a bad film, but it still, I felt, left a lot to be desired. I think this was a good film. I think it is worth seeing. I think Harry Potter fans will really enjoy it. I think the hardcore Potterheads will love it. I think the majority of the general audience will enjoy this film. But for me, I think this could have been a lot better than it was. I think it had the potential to have been a real great film. For me, it kind of fell short a bit. It was good. I did enjoy it. I did like it. But it was kind of good, but not great. That being said, I'm going to give Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them three stars. Although I don't think this was a great film, I did enjoy it, I did think it was a good film, and one of the best things I think about this film is that it sets up a lot to be explored now in future films, and I think because of that there's a lot of potential going forward now, so I am looking forward to the sequel, we'll just see what they're going to do going forward. And there we go, that wraps up my review of Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Have you seen the film yet? And if so, what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. And also, if you like this, then make sure to click subscribe to see more, but for now, I've been David Lewis Sullivan, I'll see you next time.